Okay, hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. Now, in this video, you guys just saw me roast all of these samples. I had 10 samples from Coffee Net. Thank you. So now we get to do the fun part. We've had uh, a little bit of time for these coffees to rest in their little baggies. Um, I'll B-roll some shots for you on the roast and what they look like, the color, the quality of these greens. And the goal for this is to cup all of these uh, coffees um, against each other and just see. And if we like something, we'll put it on the list for a possible future buy from Coffee Net. Now Coffee Net, um, they will be having, I'm in California, they're in Australia. They said they were going to have sort of like a warehouse to distribute to uh, United States in Oakland. So if it's the Oakland I'm thinking of, which is in NorCal, that may be feasible in terms of shipping fees and financial stuff and things like that. But I'll keep you posted on that. So uh, we're gonna get, go ahead and get started. I've already have, what we're gonna do is uh, break up all these 10 samples into five sections because I only have five bowls. So I have one, two, three, four, five like this. Throughout this whole process, I'll let you know what were the kind of like little things that I saw in terms of roasting each one of these. And it took like three hours, <laughs> but uh, well worth it. So actually, and then my husband is gonna help me cup some of these so we can get a different palette. Good, we set it up, let's get started. Thing about this cupping, since we don't have enough bowls, we're gonna have to clean all five of these out to do the rest of the samples, which is kind of a shame because we'd want to uh, cup the washed against the naturals, against that one honey that we have over there. Um, so with that being said, it just means that our note taking, what we write down here is pretty crucial so that when we go back to look at this and we're Cupping the naturals, we have still some good things to contrast it against. So while we wait for these guys to brew, I'll let you know again if you didn't get me on that uh, video where we were roasting. Uh, basically, I was doing a preheat of maybe like a 300 degrees and then letting the machine come down to uh, 225, 226. The first roast out of the gate was a 230 because it was the first roast and otherwise it was basically a cold machine. Otherwise, when I was starting to get into like the fourth roast of one of these samples already, the machine was holding so well um, as a thermal battery from batch to batch, it took, so, it took so much longer to get down to temperature. And I really didn't wanna just spend a lot of time at the roaster doing these samples. So what I did was Right after I dropped one of the batches, I'd already reached, I don't know, like uh, 380 degrees most likely, right, in the roaster because to get those, those first cracks. Um, so what I did after I dropped that batch and I was getting ready for the next one so I could roast back to back and not wait so long, was I took out the trier, I opened the door to the, to the drum, I have the fan on full, um, the roast air fan, and then I've got the cooling fan of the tray going, that kind of sucks a little bit of air. Um, and so that would steadily and quickly bring my temperature back down, uh, but not drastically enough where I knew it wasn't holding temperature well. So that really helped. If I left the trier in there, if I left the, um, the door of the drum closed, it would have taken even longer to roast all of these batches. So time is precious for me, so I don't like to waste too much time if I can be efficient. I still love to roast, but I don't like to waste time if I know I can be efficient, especially if I'm going to be doing this more often. And it was a great experience to just go, okay, like if somebody, if I want to get samples from a new green uh, source, like what are the motions? Um, how could I do this efficiently? Um, which I think it was so nice to have Coffee Net send me 10 samples because I could really nail down a system doing this back to back. 10 times. Okay, cool. We have four minutes here. Okay. I also roasted all of these without the use of um, any software. So I didn't have any bean temp or anything like that monitoring on these guys. And I felt like I didn't need to. Um, 
sometimes I, with this being such a like a non-traditional uh, batch size I was thinking well you know I really don't want to rely too much on the data I think it'll be fun to do that next time um, but I really wanted to be present and just pay attention and get intuitive with um, what each coffee needed since since each coffee was different and I didn't want sort of that unnecessary almost distracting data of roast path um, hindering me from actually just roasting the coffee you know and paying attention and uh, turning down the heat when I felt like I needed to turn it down so I think it was also just a good practice in uh, building roast skills and roast intuition roaster intuition Okay, I'm just gonna go one at a time because that was a lot to handle at once. No, there's one right there for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you want to make notes or you just want a cup or taste? And they're all different? They're all different. And am I choosing like the best one I like? Um, if you want to, yeah. Just see what you get and just taste. So how it's numbered is one, Two, three, four, five, like that. Okay, one, two, three. You don't need to do that because it agitates all the shit in there. Oh. Okay. So just go like this, like that, and then dip. Okay? Okay. Do multiple takes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need to be like, put <laughs> just could gently drop it in there. Cause it doesn't sound nice. <laughs> yeah. it sounds like you're like hawking up loogies. <laughs> but how do I suck it up? Like that powerful. Like, like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like noodles. I do that, but it doesn't sound like yours. It doesn't need to sound. Just in your mouth, the feel of like, you want it to like. <laughs> it's like you swallowed a little thing. Like. I did that. How, try slowly like this. Mm -hmm. To slowly slow it down first. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And then when you get comfortable, then make it fast. Perfect. Okay, and then yeah. You try. Perfect. That's better. Yeah. And then you can kind of like almost chew it. You know, let it kind of like settle around and all in your mouth and mm -hmm. your palate and don't swallow it and then just then, then let it out. Wow, this one's way different from that one. Isn't it? Yeah. I can't even describe the taste. Yeah, just keep tasting it and see what comes to you. Ain't bad at it. Good. My favorite, mm -hmm. the most unique, mm -hmm. is number two. Yeah, that's my favorite too. And then the next one will be number one. Number one? Yeah. Interesting. That would be my second one, and then the fourth one. Because I also think it's it's unique in a way that it's like almost like a rich, dry, nutty, dark cocoa with a hint of like red grape skin. Mm -hmm. Like a skin, yeah. Mm. It has that uh, full body. Mm. Right? I didn't get that. That's why I got, tried it, you know, two rounds. Yeah, and then two. the second one I got, like a bright orange, like, a slight of like a milky chocolate. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's what I got out of it. It's like milky chocolate and orange. Mm. It's bright. Third one wasn't my favorite. It was like flat mm. a little bit. 
uh, sour tomato, dry tobacco. Mm. Uh, fourth one was good. I like that. It was like a lemon tea. Uh, that brings a sourness and it was like floral in some sense. Mm -hmm. And it's nutty. Yeah. Uh, fifth one I didn't like. Yeah. It's like lemon, cocoa, dry walnuts, and tobacco. Mm. So I'm not a big fan of the, t the dryness. Yeah. Of the three and five. Three and five were similar. Hmm. I got a little different. So I thought one was very flat upon first tasting it. It just felt underdeveloped to me and kind of bready. So I didn't like that at all. Hmm. Uh, number two, I loved. I got so a lot of fruit. Like that. Yeah. I got a lot of berries, stone fruit chocolates. Yeah. Light and smooth finish. Felt like it had good body. It was like yeah. very balanced. I was like, I'm so we said ends. the same thing. Yeah, I like I like number two a lot. I got strawberries for the fruit. I got sweet, bright fruit. Just really good. I'd call that, um, you know, just an all around good coffee. Mm -hmm. That would be my favorite out of the washed Everything. coffees. Yeah. yeah. It's so, unique. Definitely. Number three, I thought was my second favorite, but I still yeah. wouldn't like it. Yeah. Not second favorite. I say second best. Okay. In the lineup, I'd say for me, I guess in my palate right now, I want I want something balanced, or maybe I'm looking for something balanced. I didn't um, feel like it was balanced. So. I felt like it was drier. Yeah, dry. Bitter, flatter than two, but mm -hmm. kind of like trying to be two, but not reaching it. Okay. I thought it was better than one as I was cupping it, mm. um, and better on round two. And I, I called it a. For me, that's what it was. But if I were to choose, I would only choose one out of the bunch right now. Number four, very bright citrus fruit. I mm -hmm. called it light. I called it tart. Uh, dry, very astringent in the mouth. And if the there is fruit in there besides just lemon. Um, I got lemons, I got grapefruits. Um, yeah, just like tart. And I felt empty. I felt it be empty on round two. Like it didn't have any body, it didn't have anything. Number two is the best. Number two is the best, yeah. yeah. That's cool that we're in agreement on that one. Okay, so number two was... Da -da -da -da. It is a Katura washed. And the grower's name is Nubia Lol. Lolita? Mmm. Katura? Smells good. That's just a species. Huh. The varietal. Where's the region? What is that? I don't know. Quindio? Queen, Quindio? That's a Q, right? Where is that, though? I don't know. We're gonna look that up. I'll research it. I'll put it on the screen for you guys, if I can. It smells very floral and fruity. It smells good, huh? Yeah, it's very fruity. Yeah. So we'll attach that to here. So we like this guy. Yeah. I think it's awesome. That's a good one. Okay. Of the washed coffee. I don't think I like... ever tasted like anything. Something I mean, like around that? here, right? It's just always Ethiopia. And what do you know? This was the first sample that I roasted um, for you guys watching. It's a 225 charge. I hit first crack at 848. And then I dropped all of these coffees two minutes post first crack. What's the third one? The third one? The third one was, oh yeah, what is second place? We'll look, we'll go ahead and call all these out. So the second place was Javier, by Javier Rubio um, from the Tolima region. It was a yellow Bourbon. Cool, I've never tried that before. It's washed and it's- It's not bourbon? Bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah, uh, anaerobic. So mm -hmm. processed, it's washed processed, but also not processed with oxygen. Oh. You wanna smell it? That was number three that we liked. Number two is second place. I like number four. Number four, okay. Number four was... Mm, this one's pretty good. Number four like was... Tea one. Another Katura huh. washed from the Nariño region by Tulio Adagni. Wow, so we like this Katura. I like number two the best. Number two's best, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, break until the natural time. Okay, I usually don't get anything off of the uh, breaking the crust and smelling the, the uh, fragrance, but um, that was different. It seemed more complex and more interesting than just wet cardboard. <laughs> so that is cool, that's interesting. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and take out these grounds. So eight and ten. Eight and ten. Yeah, eight to me was my uh, it was bitter, sour, bread, smoky, flat, burnt. Uh, ten was the same. It was like dry, nutty, and I taste more burnt mm -hmm. on on the tenth one. Mm -hmm. uh, the most unique one out of this entire collection was number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, floral, hibiscus, mm -hmm. uh, tea, uh, some blossom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very bright, strawberry. Mm -hmm. Jam and then nutty. That's what I got. Cool. And then my second I like would be seven. Mm -hmm. It's bright banana, red apples, blueberry, and chocolate. Nice. And then uh, and then my third would be th this one, number six. Mm -hmm. It's like grapefruit, strawberry, or grapes and strawberry. Mm -hmm. A walnut, uh, chocolate. It's dry. It has a uh, orange rind. The bitterness from the orange rind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but out of all, I would choose a number nine. Number nine, yeah. Because for it's the most uniqueness. unique. Uniqueness. Yeah. yeah. In terms of uniqueness. Okay, cool. Okay, I think we have some similarities. I thought six was um, like off the bat, amazing tasting. Mm -hmm. I was like, cool. It's uh, full bodied, but yeah. still having um, some light characteristics like tangerines and and some citrusy things yeah and i thought that was really interesting off uh, off the bat i thought it was savory still too mm -hmm. so it was kind of weird i got that i did get that chocolate i got that caramel i got a little saltiness like mm -hmm. i felt i was eating something on savory because yeah. of the full bodiedness okay and then so i liked it and then number seven um i really like that one too yeah. citrus full bodied again but still having a lot of um, nice juicy fruit flavors in there. Yeah. Um, still had a, a dry finish, but I thought it was a compliment to the rest. Like that it was bright. Yeah, it was a really nice balance and um, um, kind of like a smooth in the full bodiness. I like that that mouth feel, mm. like full. Um, and then I got like more more stone fruits, like apricots and plums and things like that. So okay. that's what I was feeling from that one. You have really awesome like descriptors, like you could pull um, those those really clean notes. Number eight, which is this one, um, I actually thought it was nice for like um, maybe like an espresso. Mm. Uh, definitely not like on the lighter end of things. Yeah. Um, it did have some brightness, which was good. Mm -hmm. um, it was still light bodied, but I felt that it was chicory. Smoky, yeah, roasty, smoky. roasty, but to yeah. me, I didn't feel that it was a bad thing. I felt it was smooth. I felt it was berry. I felt there was spice um, and a clean finish instead of a dry finish. But there's no punch to make it unique. I've, yeah, maybe it's something there for uh, going darker yeah. to develop it a little bit more. Again, these are all roasted city level, so I feel like you go a little bit more. Yeah. It's going to be nice. And then number nine, which is this one. Again, yeah, that like jumped out yeah. at me. It was like, oh, wow. It, yeah, it was different. I was like, woo. Uh, citrus fruit, light, um, tea-like body, berries, stone fruit. Yeah, I haven't tasted anything you roasted like that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Nothing like that. I've never had anything like that or roasted anything like that. I got juicy, candy, mm -hmm. like just like uh, jumped out at me, starburst, yeah. very sweet and sour candy. The astringency to me, it, yeah. it has a dry finish, like a nice tart dry finish, but mm -hmm. it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like I it would very... say that is the geisha. The geisha? Yeah, you yeah. think so? That's why. Let's think. not look yet. Okay. Yeah. So super interesting and nice and juicy on, on round two. So it kept tasting really good. Last one, my least favorite of all. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. It was extremely flat, light mm -hmm. bodied. Um, the fruit in there is just maybe like a dried up apricot, um, dry, flat, not bad, but in comparison, when I compare them to the rest, yeah. it really does not compare to the rest. Okay. So before we look, 
Oh yeah, okay, so now we can reveal. Number six was, which you did like six or mm -hmm. what? Six, seven, nine. Keep my shit open. Six, seven, and nine. Okay, the nine so being the best. Nine being the best. This one was by Luz, Luz Helena Balazar from the Quindio region. It's a Veridad Colombia. It's natural process, EF2. I have no idea what that means. Mm. So that's that. Oh, it's a Colombia. Yeah, a Colombia varietal. Doesn't mean it's exactly from Colombia uh. necessarily, but I don't know that. Uh, we did like number seven, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh yes, this one. This is by like Javier Rubio from the Tolima region. It's a natural process and it's called San Bernardo. Okay. This one smells amazing. Yeah. Smell that one. I was, when I was roasting that, that one jumped out to me right out of the roaster. Does it still smell good? Yeah, it smells it very different. Or I let it all Very out. blueberry. Oh yeah. Yeah. It smells like good. very bluish. Yeah, that smell. It smells so good. Yeah. That one I like a lot. Okay. Number eight is by <coughs> Mario Ivan Lopez from the Queen Video. That's the Gesha. No. <laughs> That's <laughs> the Gesha natural process. Gesha. Okay. Sign oh, yeah. So we won't get into that, but there um, <laughs> is no discernible, there's no good naming. But well, you would have to learn how to roast this correctly, right? Because people will take time in roasting this. Well, there's I didn't like... think, well, you only, th you only say that because right? you said you didn't like it, right? Well, I thought there is a specific way people like just compete based on roasting in Keisha, right? Yeah, but we don't know where it's from, mm -hmm. so we don't really know. Oh, I see. The varietal of geisha, uh, actually there's some in the Central Americas and in Africa. So mm -hmm. we don't really know exactly where this is from. They spelled it. Usually it signifies from Africa. Okay. So we don't really know. Okay, so don't let that whole like 98 yeah. points kind of sway you from your taste or whatever. Try to be very non-biased when you cup. I do like... Nine. Nine, so it's nine. Nine, we really like nine. Uh, but it's by Felipe Arxilla from the Quindillo. It's a Castillo, oh. it's natural. And it's 200, Quindios. yeah, 200 hours. I don't know what that means. Maybe you guys can explain in the comments. I smell that. We loved number nine. I'd say that one was like a, for me, a It yeah, almost star. smells like the number seven. It almost the blueberry like one? It, but the number seven has a stronger smell, mm -hmm. but then the nine has a better taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the smell, the scent It's not of it, as like strong. strong. Yeah. That blueberry thing. Okay. And then I'm sorry, but number 10, we did not like at all, which was by Louise Annabal Cardivan from the Julia region. It's peak Bourbon and it's honey process. Yeah, you know what? As I've been, I've roasted a couple honeys now, and um, I don't like honey processed coffees. I'm not really into it. Um, but these, this natural here, so we like seven a lot from mm -hmm. the San Bernardo natural. Okay, and then what coffee net? Again, as a reminder, and you don't know, but these are all exotic. Hmm. Exotic coffees. Oh wow. Yeah. Nine is very exotic. Yeah, nine is very <laughs> exotic. I really love this yeah. one. And number two. I gave it a five on my little score sheet. <laughs> two is exotic as well. Two? Yeah. Number two. Yeah, we love two. That was just very good. I really think like seven was lovely, six was lovely. Eight was, you know, I think you developed that little gesha a little bit more. Now you should fine tune it by pulling out number two. Mm -hmm. And number nine, number six and seven, and do it all together. <gasps> yeah, you're right. We should. Okay. So two, and let him nine, rest. seven, six, and then your other favorite from here. Good idea. Okay. Yeah. So we'll let them rest for um, a little bit longer, and then we'll do that again. Mm -hmm. um, to share with you guys what, um, in the roaster, what the Gesha was, um, 226 charge. We hit yellow at 4.14. We hit first crack at 9.06. 
So, you know, standard in terms of roasting, um, the development on the beans is good. You know, it's a city roast, two minutes post press crack. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Number nine, the one that we loved, this one, um, we had a 448 uh, green to yellow transition, and then I think a very early first crack at around six minutes. So it was a very um, quick moving roast for this one. And then we dropped it, you know, two minutes post. It was very good. Um, and then the other ones that we liked, which was numbers six and seven. Six and seven. That was... I don't know, I can't read my writing, but they were all, nothing was out of the ordinary on the naturals. The naturals roast um, one minute quicker than the washed in terms of um, roasting for samples. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That was a massive cupping. That was super fun. We are gonna make a final decision on a couple of these, probably, I don't know, maybe in time for holiday? I'm not sure, let's see what happens. Um, like like uh, we said here, we're gonna cup our favorites. So we had number two, number nine, six, and seven as our favorites, and we're gonna cup those against each other. But we're gonna let these um, coffees rest for um, a solid 24 hours uh, plus, and then we'll cup again and see what's up with that. Okay, thanks so much for watching. That was super fun. Um, Coffee Net, thank you for sending us samples. We, I will be in touch. All right, see ya, bye.